Thank you for joining us. Tyron Pillay is no stranger to Sadhna. Some seasons back, we featured Tyron's remarkable personal journey of triumph through adversity with his Step Up 500 campaign in aid of cancer and jumping kids. Tyron has since gone on to become a bronze medalist for South Africa at the Brazilian Paralympics and has been flying our flag high on numerous international sporting platforms. Hi Tyron and welcome back to Sadna. Thank you so much. Tyron, now I know we've, we've recounted your journey some seasons back, but so much has happened in between. Take us through that journey. Oh wow, so obviously when we first met, I was kind of starting up, it was just the initial phase. Uh, since then, a lot has happened. I think I'm going to be entering in my fourth World Championships as of next month, as well as been to Paralympic Games, uh, went to the All Africa Games as well, medaled in both of those, a gold and a bronze. So yeah, a lot has happened as far as a sporting career, but a lot ha else has happened, whereas I've actually made a difference to society and the community as well. That's something you're passionate about? Love it. That's, that's what I'm all about. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's great being the sportsman, it's great doing all the things that we do, but the difference and the legacy that we create is far greater. Okay, so we're going to touch on both those points, um, but let's start firstly, your personal journey, becoming an athlete, being differently abled as a child, growing up, what spurred you on with such fierce determination to excel the way you have? I always believed in one thing, it was green and gold. From the time I was three years old, stood in front of the mirror, imagined I was running the Olympics. Uh, I used to pass a can of deodorant to myself, think I was in that relay, you know, that kind of thing. So I always believed it was going to happen. I just didn't know how it was all going to transpire. And it took 33, three, what, it was 33 years effectively when I eventually got onto that podium. So for me, yeah, it was a long time coming, but it's something I believed in most. So I, that's why I achieved it. Okay, so you said the green and gold. What drew you to being an athlete? Like why specifically? I mean, of all the fields you could have chosen and all the career moves you could have made. Because I mean, it's not easy. I, I imagine as a young Indian boy who's differently abled, I mean, it's not like you have the world at your feet. That, that is true. Uh, I think also it stems from my parents. My parents were sportsmen. Right. So I think that helped me quite a bit. But I had my own drive. I had my own determination. So I think for me, it was, it was all I ever wanted. I know going to school, getting a degree, all of that was important as well. But for me, it was always to be the sportsman. And I, I just loved that whole idea of it. Unfortunately, at the time, it was my dad said to me, you've got to go to university, get a job, you know, work, do the usual things. Mm. But as I got through, I wasn't happy with that. You know, there was something that was missing. Mm. And I watched the Beijing Paralympics in 2008. And that's when I said, no, I could do this. this. This is easy. This is not a difficult thing. And that's when the whole spark came alive and just worked towards it and believed in the dream and just kept going for it. Yeah. So like you said, it took you 33 years to reach that podium. What was that feeling like, like finally getting there? Unreal. Uh, I'm going to tell you something that most people don't know. So obviously before that, I couldn't even walk. Um, after the event, I think I was so dehydrated and so much energy put into that event that I passed out. I literally cramped everywhere, so I couldn't even get to the medal ceremony. So the initial part of it, I can't tell you much about. There was no emotion there. But when I got onto that podium, the first thought was my dad, somebody who was so important to me. I, I lost him a long time ago. It's 17 years now that I lost my dad. So he was somebody that I thought about immediately. So I think that was the first thing, was him and thanking him so much for what he gave to me. And also another challenge was the fact that my mom was just overcoming cancer at that time. So it was all of that, you know, I had all of those thoughts and saying thank them more than anything else. And then also giving me the belief that I have to go out there and do whatever I wanted to. So those were the things that went through my mind. But I must be honest, when I saw the flag go up, it was more the honor of representing our country. I always say this to people, I feel like I'm a soldier who goes out to war and to battle. And that's how it made me feel like I went there and I did something great for our country. And being the first Indian boy to actually go up there and do it, it was a big honor for me. So you've mentioned um, and you've said the sentiment, be the best that you can be. Obviously, in the Indian community, the judgment of being differently abled is quite stark and it's quite glaring. How do you deal with it? I mean, now you're a medalist, now you're a you know, champion, successful, people love you. But prior to that, I don't imagine life is very difficult. How do you change people's perception, especially if they're not Tyron Pele and they don't have those abilities and those skills? People look at you differently. I think obviously for me as well, I mean, I went through that same thing. Uh, school was difficult, really difficult. I mean, I was mocked as a kid. Uh, a lot of the kids saw me differently, even teachers saw me differently. So I think that was a bit of a challenge for me and how I had to adapt. But one of the most important things was the support structure that I had. I mean, my grandmother was amazing to me. I mean, having her in my corner, allowing me every single opportunity to speak to her and give me some of her advice was important. But also my brother, my sister, my mom and dad, all of them being there for me all the time played an important role. And I think support is an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. 
yes, I'm a very strong-minded character and I, I can achieve anything that I believe in, but without their help, I don't think I would have got there. So that, that said, I think also the new role would be to think about yourself completely differently. You go, you, and, and that's what I do. I look at myself as somebody who is the change. Uh, more people see me, more people see my prosthetic leg, they understand that it's acceptable. Mm -hmm. Coming from an Indian community, it was not something that was acceptable. Mm -hmm. And I think that was one of the biggest things, was that I became that change. And I still remember this conversation. My mom took me to the airport and she says, can't you put long pants on? Everybody's staring at you. And I said, millions of people around the world see me on TV. This is where you've got to be the change as well. And I eventually got through to her to the point that now she has accepted it. So that's why I say it's education of people. I think the more we educate people, the more they understand disability, mm -hmm. the better it becomes. I mean, I had a bad incident when I came back from Rio in 2016 where the airline refused to let me on board because of my prosthetic leg. Mm -hmm. And I never asked for anybody to be dismissed. I didn't yes. ask for anything but to be educated, understand yes. what disability is. Yes. There's different types of disability. Yes. And that immediately transformed the mindsets of the airlines. Mm. And now you don't have those issues anymore. So yeah, it, it's good to educate people so that they understand better. Does your spirituality play a role in that, in seeing you through those obstacles and those hurdles? I have to say, at the outset, I think in the beginning, coming from a Hindu home is very important, obviously. God plays an important role in us. And for me, it I question a lot of things, and I have to be honest with you. I think when I was born, I always ask God, why did this happen to me? You know, what did we do wrong? Why? And then I realized that this happened to me for a reason. There was a purpose behind this, and my purpose was to inspire and motivate people. And I think God blessed me with the most amazing gift. Mm -hmm. And because of what he's given to me, I'm able to inspire and motivate so many others. So God has always been a central role in your life? Totally. Always has been. That's and slays, yeah. Do you believe that we are changing the stereotypes and the perceptions around those who are disabled and differently abled? You know, funny enough you say that, yesterday I saw something that really upset me. Um, I think disability is still not getting the recognition that it deserves. I think there's always going to be that problem. Mm -hmm. I think it also stems from the fact that people with disabilities will always be treated differently. Mm -hmm. But we should realize they're no different from everybody else. Mm -hmm. All they want is to be given an equal opportunity. Mm -hmm. And even though I was upset yesterday, I said it's my turn now to voice my opinion on it. So I will later today make my voice heard on that. And I will make it known to people that there is discrepancies between an able-bodied athlete and a para-athlete. So it's not something that should be treated differently, it should be treated equally. That's incredible. For children, for example, obviously this, this notion of educating and lifting this veil of ignorance, I think is um, very necessary amongst adults. But for children, for example, who are undergoing these challenges and feeling the effects of this judgment on a daily basis, obviously you've become this voice and this example. How, what do you say to them to say, don't let it get you down. You can be so much more than what this judgment um, allows, really. I think just be yourself. Just go out there. If you want to play sport, play sport. If you feel you want to be a bookworm, read books, do, do what makes you happy. And don't let anybody tell you nothing that, oh, well, what I should say is that nothing is possible or impossible. You can just go out there and achieve anything. And I think that's the thing I believe in. Impossible is not a word to me. It's I'm possible. So I give that advice to a lot of youngsters. Just go out there and be yourself. Enjoy life. Live it. Because it's one life that we have. So make the most of it. Now, I know you're a motivational speaker as well. Share with us some of the stuff that you share with the people that you speak to. Oh, well, there's so much of stuff that I, I love saying. Um, obviously, whatever I speak of, I speak of my own personal journey and what I've been through. I think having experienced a lot in my life, my biggest thing is always go out there and believe in yourself. I think when you have the belief, you can achieve anything. Mm -hmm. And that, that's one of the things for me is that I believe so much in myself. And every single one of us should, whether you want to become a sportsman, whether you want to become a teacher, a lawyer, a doctor, whatever might that be, mm -hmm. always believe in yourself, always back yourself. And I think it's so important to have that belief because it takes you to where you want to go. And never forget who you are. I think that's an important thing. I know a lot of people always refer to me as a humble guy, but that's who I am. You know, I'm very grounded. I've come from a home where I remember how I started off and I haven't forgotten my way. Mm -hmm. And I think those are the important things. Remember all of that because it helps you to get you where you're going to go. Thank you so much for that inspiration, Tyron. It's been so wonderful having you join us. I'm sure we'll be chatting to you at some point in the future, but we certainly wish you every success and lots more medals. And keep flying our South African flag high. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So as the country marks National Disability Month, we certainly hope you've been enlightened this morning right here on Sadhana, the Inward Path.